Hey guys, Steve Rhino again. I decided to do another video. Uh, this time, uh, I'm gonna be reading the prologue of my book. Um, I'm just gonna say sorry in advance because I might stutter or I might get some parts messed up. I'm gonna try my best not to. So uh, let's get into it. Prologue. Within a forested area that is vibrant with wildlife, a masculine figure is praying next to a memorial shrine that is well crafted with wood. The figure is nine feet tall, wearing a red loincloth cloth that has tears in the fabric. The attire is held up by a black belt with a specialized golden buckle that resembles a beast's skull. The figure's skin compares to hardened magma with cracks in it, the cracks revealing lava that flows within but never seeps out. Eye sockets are dark. The non-existent nose is skeletal, but there is no bone just hardened magma and small cracks of lava light. The mouth has no lips, teeth as sharp as the two black horns that jet out from the forehead and curve upwards. The face has a gray color to it, similar to a smoothed out rock. Other parts of this being's body resembles that gray texture, most notably where the forearms and knees are at. Finishing the silent prayer, the eye sockets then glow with lava as if it is opening its non-existent eyes. Turning away from the shrine to walk forward, the masculine being feels regret, a feeling that haunts it. The memory of that day is what caused a deep trauma, but also provided a calling. Heading back to where the home is, the being is stopped in its tracks upon seeing a woman wearing an Asian style of attire that closely resembled that of a rodent straw hat, two sheath blades at her side, and a, gray, and a gray kimono. A red string tied to her horns to symbolize she is loyal to her husband. Small lantern earrings dimly glow due to it being daylight, symbolizing that she has two children. Rengoku, he said with a hand of surprise in his tone of voice. What brings you here? For several seconds, she does not respond judging how she would, how she should tell the news about the others. To put it simply, they're dead. Valhalla and Hell have been murdered. I failed in trying to save them. From who? He asked in shock. Why? Why were they killed? For what reason? To get to me it is complicated, Randall Kier. What of the children? They are, they are unharmed. They are now in your sole care. Renro Kira is wounded by the news. He knows Rengoku is not telling him enough, but he is unsure how to handle this. All of a sudden, an instance where he had no control again of saving loved ones. Why did I not know as soon as this was happening? Why? I don't know the answer to that, but so and I cannot avoid them any longer. We're going to face them. They won't attack you because they know what you can do. She sighs out, heading towards him, her natural demonic eyes showing off as she is now up close to him, not obscured, not obscured by the straw hat. She takes out a smoking pipe from her kimono before using pyromancy to light the end of the pipe as she goes to smoke. Her small dark horns protrude from the ends of her forehead, pointing straight as a red string is tight. She stood at almost six feet, her skin youthful and caramel in color, black hair with natural white down to her back. She is beautiful. Letting out a puff of smoke, she then says, take care of them. If we live, we'll be back. If we don't, you'll know. I can help. Stop thinking you can do things yourself. I'm not going to let the children lose another mother. His voice is firm with anger. Lowering the pipe to her stomach, her eyes look into his sockets with sternness. This is outside of your control. It is not as easy as you think, and right now, you're still recovering from what happened many years ago. Time works differently for us. I understand that. Though what I said is final, and I will not argue this anymore. They stare at each other firmly before Randall Kier drops it. The taller being looks at the sword known as So, and then at her. 
Just let it protect you as much as it can. It is a strong weapon. The strongest I've ever had. She then offers her free hand, her free hand to him, and he gently takes it into his, into his hold with his left hand. Knowing that this could be the last time they see each other, they share a solemn moment of silence for those who passed, for what was lost, for what will come. End of the prologue. So yeah, guys, that was the prologue there. Um, just let me know what you guys thought. I mean, that was just like a easy five minute read right there. No, nothing too much, only uh, two pages. So uh, see you guys next time. <laughs>